I searched through the Squadbuster subreddit, X posts, and YouTube comments to figure out what the community most wanted to see improved about the game. And six main things came up over and over. In this video, we're going to explore what those six things are and my ideas for how to improve them. If you'd like to support the channel, please be sure to use code Bailey in any Supercell game. Now let's get into the list. Number one is reroll dice. Building the best squad depends mostly on getting lucky pulls from chess, which is why reroll dice exist. They give players a second chance per chest at getting the characters they're looking for and building their preferred squad. Free to play players can collect them in the daily chest, the free track of the gem pass, Tara's mystery challenge, or the pinata festival event, which if they get really lucky only gives them a handful per week. The much more efficient method of collecting them is by simply buying them for 900 gold per three dice. And since they provide a significant advantage to players in a match, it makes it well worth the cost. But since the free ways to collect them don't offer players nearly as many dice as if they were to spend resources to get them, they're more likely to just buy more dice when they run out in order to increase their chances of success in matches. Which is where the challenge arises. Players are able to more frequently influence the RNG of the game by spending money, giving a significant disadvantage to free to play players. And I've seen it happen firsthand many times. I'll get into matches where my chest pulls are really unlucky and the only way to turn the tide back in my favor is to use reroll dice. So my solution would be to make rerolls a free part of each match and not an expendable resource. This would allow an even playing field between free and paid players, allowing them the same amount of opportunities to improve their match. I would also change the amount of character choices per chest from three to six to allow players the opportunity to pick at least one character from every class, increasing the strategic focus of the game and hopefully reducing the amount of rerolls used per match. Number two is chests. Chests are the primary way for players to progress for free in squad busters. It provides arguably the most valuable resource in the game characters, but chests are gated behind a ticket system that only allows you one new ticket every three hours, totaling eight chests per day. There's also the ability to purchase tickets for gold, giving you more chests per day, depending on how much gold you have. And the main challenge the community has with chests is that they entirely rely on luck to pull the characters you're looking for. It can take months to unlock characters, let alone rank them to max level, and placing that process behind RNG makes competition much more difficult for free-to-play players. Brawl Stars used to have a very similar system with Brawl Brawl boxes and the token system that limited the amount of boxes you could open per day. Brawl boxes were also an RNG based item that many players would repeatedly get unlucky when opening. Realizing this, the team eventually pivoted away from Brawl boxes into the much more dependable credit system that guaranteed players would unlock exactly the character they wanted over time. My solution to chest and squad busters is not a new one. I would literally bring over the credit system into squad to give more opportunity for players to grow their accounts with less RNG. Players would be able to gradually acquire enough of a certain squad resource to eventually unlock new characters or higher ranks of characters they already have. And within this system, chests can stay almost exactly as they are, but more as a bonus incentive for playing every day. They would just be limited to three bonus chests per day instead of the usual eight. Number three is keys. This was probably the most requested improvement I saw across all social media. Many players were looking for ways to improve keys within the game because like other battle items, they're able to be bought with gold and gold with real world money, giving a competitive advantage to paid players over free ones. And while their effects may not be felt as intensely with chess keys and epic keys, the major challenge is with fusion keys. Fusion keys provide a massive advantage to players at any point in a match, regardless of your place in it. A player can be in last place and use a fusion key to essentially bring them back from the dead and start a comeback. This use case is great for the game because it provides underdogs with a chance to place in the top five regardless of their RNG so far in a match. But too often players who are having great RNG matches will leverage the fusion key to extend their lead even further, basically nullifying the underdog's chances of ever coming back. You add to that the ability to purchase these advantages with money and you start to see why many players are hoping for an improvement in this aspect of the game. My solution to this is fairly simple, gate keys behind squad size. For example, if your squad gets to say six or seven characters, keys will then be disabled for the rest of the match unless your squad gets busted below six or seven characters again. This will allow underdogs to benefit from the boost that keys provide and also will not allow match leaders to overwhelm the rest of the lobby with a greater advantage. And moving on to number... Hang on a second. Okay, so this thing just arrived in the mail and it's completely locked. So maybe it has to do with the tournament I was just a part of. Thank you to Samsung Galaxy for sponsoring today's video. All of a sudden, these brand new challenges showed up in Squad Busters. For that not smart spender, I need to finish a game in fifth place or higher with 50 coins or more unspent. And then for Monster Hunter, it looks like I need to just bust 30 monsters in one game. 
Boom, there we go. Dude, look, the challenge changed. Now I see half of the code. It says 425. Get these gems and... All right, there we go, challenge completed. Now we've got both of the codes for the lockbox. Let's go open it up. Here we go. Oh, oh, no way. And it came with this card too. It says you're invited. Now that you're warmed up, we invite you to test your skills against the best mobile gamers in the Squad Busters community. During the Galaxy Battle Squad Heroes Grand Finals, myself and nine other creators will be facing off against the best of the best in the community. Be sure to set a reminder by clicking the link in the description for when that event goes live. And we'll be playing on the brand new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 6. With its larger than ever 6.3 inch cover screen and less rounded corners, it opens up to reveal one of the most impressive foldable screens I've ever seen. While playing Squad Busters, it means I can see much more of the map at any moment, giving me better situational awareness in matches. Plus, I don't have to strain my eyes as much to see everything that's going on. And with the Z Fold 6's unique form factor, multitasking is more powerful than ever. I can literally be gaming while watching YouTube and using Circle to Search with Google to quickly learn more about anything happening on the screen. To order your very own Galaxy Z Fold 6, follow my link in the description. Now back to the video. Number four is spells. There are currently nine collectible non-character related spells in the game and the community feels like they're really hard to collect. The current system in place to unlock spells is through a spell collecting event that comes up maybe once every couple months. I genuinely think I've only seen it once since the game launched. And in that event, players have to collect 300 of a given spell within a certain time frame to unlock it or pay the remaining difference they have left in gold. The challenge the community is facing with this is that collecting such a large amount is nearly impossible for most players within the two day window that the event is active. Because the specific spells they're looking for drop so infrequently per match, except when playing spell heavy mods like Spell Overload, the grind to collect 300 ends up being too overwhelming and the progress is eventually lost. The only alternative currently available is to pay for gold to bypass the event altogether and basically buy the spells outright. If the later spells like Lightning, Furnace, and Log weren't so strong in the current meta, this likely wouldn't come up. But all three of these spells in particular can absolutely change the outcome of matches if you have them unlocked. So, so my solution is to increase the frequency of the spell event, increase the time the event is available, and reduce the number of spells needed to unlock each spell. Seems kind of obvious, right? Alternatively, including spells in the free-to-play unlocking progression track mentioned in the chest tickets section could also reduce the grind players are experiencing with unlocking them if they choose to spend those imaginary resources on them. Number five is friendly matches. Squad Busters shows all the potential of becoming a fantastic competitive esports game. As players gain more experience and start to learn key strategies and what squad compositions work best, the competitive aspects of the game come to life. But the one thing holding it back at the moment is an even playing field for competition. In other competitive Supercell games like Clash Royale, they've introduced a tournament standard where everyone is placed at the same card and tower levels in order to make competition solely about skill and not allowing more powerful players to have an advantage. I recently competed in a tournament against other squad Squadbusters creators, and this was something many of us felt. Some players had absolutely maxed accounts and dominated the tournament because the advantage they had over us was that significant. And also the tournament organizers had no control over the maps, mods, or comps. So my solution to this would be pretty obvious. Introduce a tournament standard into friendly matches and allow greater control over what maps, mods, and comps can be chosen. The tournament standard could simply be having every character and spell maxed when playing friendlies, or allowing the party leader to choose what rank is the maximum. This would for more fair competition in tournaments and also create some really interesting friendly matches. Of course, Squad Busters is still a very young game and I don't doubt that eventually this is exactly what the team will do, but it would just be a cool feature that the community would like to see now if possible. And finally, number six is squad balancing. It could be argued that speedsters are the most valuable class in the game right now. Of course, there are many factors that contribute to building a successful squad, but many of the best players will tell you that the game is currently in a speed meta that sees the fastest squads winning the most. But speedsters only make up one sixth of the classes in the game and pairing them heavily with attackers and tanks is a near unbeatable combination. But of course, not everyone wants to play that aggressive of a comp that relies heavily on being able to dominate other squads in the end game. Some players would prefer prefer to steer clear of fighting altogether and farm their way sneakily into a victory or to just build a more well-rounded squad that can still gather many gems and has improved survivability. But with the way the game is balanced at the moment, that's just not possible in a majority of mods. So my solution would be to give better balance to other classes for a variety of comps to thrive. I don't know if it means the devs would need to give healers and suppliers more damage output to compensate for their ability to support the squad in other ways, but making it so that other playstyles can thrive in squad busters would certainly make the game more appealing to more people. So what do you think? Let me know how you would improve the game or what other things you'd like to see changed in Squad Busters.